Okay, um, yeah, welcome everyone and thank you for the invitation. Um, so together with um, Christine, I will give you an overview of uh, the products that have been developed at UMITSAT, uh, so satellite data, uh, soil moisture uh, and rainfall, and also how we can use this for early warning of crop yield deficiencies. Um, so this is a project that was executed um, as a, a project with the World Bank Group and the Drought Risk Financing Insurance Program and the Global Risk Financing Facility at the Technical University of Vienna. Um, and at the Technical University of Vienna, we develop uh, the satellite soil moisture uh, products also for Humidsat and HSAT. Um, so what we've been doing is uh, that we looked at if we can forecast yield deficiencies using Earth observation data. Um, yield forecasting is often done using crop models and meteorological data. Uh, and the use of satellite data uh, is, is, is a picking up and is getting more and more, but is still limited uh, to very often using, for example, rainfall and temperature data, which are, of course, drivers of crop development. Uh, but they exclude direct information on evaporation and also runoff, and especially uh, with, let's say, uh, changing rainfall variability, where rainfall events can become more intense, uh, so there's more rainfall in a shorter amount of time. Of course, runoff starts to become uh, very important because more will run off and won't be taken up by the soil. And on the other hand, what is often used are vegetation health indicators based on satellite data, such as the normalized difference vegetation index, uh, which is, of course, an indicator of crop development. Uh, but this can miss uh, early season delays, for example, in planting, because uh, when it hasn't been planted yet, the NDVI uh, is, is not that reliable still. And so, uh, our task was, or let's say our idea was to look if we can use satellite data that is actually in between these two um, observation data sets. And so we looked at the use of satellite soil moisture for uh, predicting uh, yield deficiencies early in the season. Um, so the data sets that we have been using is the Climate Hazards Group Infrared Precipitation with Station Data, Chirps data set, then the UMIT set, HF surface soil moisture and root soil soil moisture and the normalized difference vegetation index from the Copernicus Global Land Service. And to show you uh, what these data sets look like, um, what we're seeing here is uh, standardized anomalies compared to the long term climatology of these different data sets for Senegal. Uh, from June to August in 2019. And so in 2019, uh, there was a, a drought in Senegal. And what we're seeing here is that we're looking at the satellite data um, anomalies. And what we can see is that everything that is basically in red uh, or yellow orange colors means that there was less rainfall than usual for this period less soil moisture than usual for this period, less roots and soil moisture, and also less NDVI, so lower vegetation health, so to say, uh, for this period. Um, and you see that, that especially for June to August 2019, which is the crop growing season in Senegal, we can see that there are, are very negative uh, values for rainfall, soil moisture, and NDVI. So to, to, let's say, to do a yield forecasting or a prediction of yield, uh, we use the reported yield data at district level uh, from Senegal. And an example can be seen here. So this is for millet. Uh, this is the reported yield. So the actual values, they have been uh, standardized and detrended. Um, and what we wanted to do is to get an early warning on yield deficiency. So when are we, let's say, below uh, the average uh, value that is usually there for yields for millet. And what we did is that we looked at the planting period. So for millet in Senegal, the planting period is so say from, from June to the end of July. And so what we did is that we looked at the rainfall data, as I showed in the graphics before, uh, the soil moisture data and the NDVI data uh, for this period from June to to July to see if we can predict 
how the variability is in the yields per millet. Um, so yeah, using early season satellite data to model the spatial and temporal variability in the yield anomalies. Uh, two input scenarios is what we tested. So one time we ran a model based on the chirps precipitation data and the normalized different vegetation index. And one time we ran the model using also soil moisture and root zone soil moisture information to see if we can improve our predictions of yield. And what we're seeing here in the yellow line is, so in gray, we see the reported yields from Senegal. And in the yellow line, we can see um, the predicted yield if we're only using CHIRPS rainfall data and the normalized difference vegetation index, so the vegetation health uh, information. And what we can see is that, um, especially if we have, let's say, yield deficiencies, um, this is not that well captured uh, with this model. However, if we then add information on soil moisture and root zone soil moisture, so at, from the beginning of the season, so this is, let's say, data from, from June and July, uh, we can already give a very good um, forecast of the yields at the end of the season. So what we're seeing here with this blue line, which includes then soil moisture information for predicting yield, we see that especially these periods or these years where there are very strong yield deficiencies, they are captured much better when we include soil moisture and root zone soil moisture information. And what we can do, because of course satellite data we have spatially, so for, for all different um, areas. Uh, in this case, this is a, a 10 kilometer spatial uh, resolution. Um, and so we can make a yield efficiency indicator for every region or every 10 kilometer area in Senegal. And this is what we've been seeing here. And um, this image is now stopping at the 2019 prediction for millet. So this prediction was done in July and it shows you the yield efficiency for the end of the season. And what we can see is that, that there's um, very strong uh, deficiencies here in the central western area. And now if we compare this to the water requirement satisfaction indicator, which is used by African risk capacity and African risk view, and uh, this is the end of season report. Uh, and this is an indicator for, let's say, the, the, the crop health uh, as well. We can see that these patterns actually uh, correspond quite well. Uh, but this prediction that we did based on the satellite data was already done in July. So we can already pretty far in advance give an indication of when yield deficiencies and where yield deficiencies might occur. So this is a very short overview. Um, of course, I'm happy uh, to, to answer any questions, but most importantly, of course, the interesting question is how can you use this? And um, Christine will now give you an overview of uh, the Umatsat Data Cube prototype uh, that could be used to do these kind of analysis.